Hi everyone, it's Laurie again, and today is day 13 of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. Um, and I'm going to be talking about which decks, which tarot decks I'm looking forward to working with in 2017. And so, it's, uh, it's really hard to narrow them down, isn't it? Got a new little owlie with me today. Hello, his name is Woody. He looks a bit grumpy. I think maybe he's a, a sore throat. I have a bit of a sore throat myself today. So, um, the very first deck I'm just going to talk briefly about because I already did a whole video on this one and it's the Everyday Witch. But I wanted to show you that I have edged the cards in some of that Paris Dusk stamp pad and they look fantastic. It looks perfect. I just, just did one pass around and it was just right for the fronts of the deck. It also seemed to make this deck a little bit sturdier um, as far as shuffling goes. Uh, it seems to be a little heftier, a little weightier, not quite as slippy and jumpy as it was before. As I say that, they'll all jump out. But I've been doing so many readings with this deck especially people in my family and myself. It's such a fantastic deck. The illustrations are just so sweet. And I know people probably don't want yet another kind of witchy themed deck, but it's really, really sweet. And it's fantastic for doing just nice kind of readings, not where you have to go into any deep depth on anything, although it can be quite deep. The other day my daughter did a Celtic cross for me on healing and it was spot on using this deck. It was, I mean, it was just really spot on. So um, there is, there's a lot of depth to it as well. I just really love it. I think this is a winner. I do. So, okay, next one. Um, I guess I'll talk about the, um, I, I joined the Indiegogo campaign for this. It's, um, it's a Madame Clara deck. This particular deck is called the Mid Centurion. It comes in this very nice sort of burlap sack, but on the inside it's, it's very soft. It's got a bit of a flocked interior. It's soft, so it's not going to scratch the cards or anything like that. And I did chop the white borders off these cards. The fronts of them had white borders. I chopped them and then I edged them in gold uh, marker from Windsor Newton. Uh, Windsor Newton, oh, I can't remember what the marker's called. Uh, the color is rose gold and it just does not come out very nicely in the camera, but it's a very pretty kind of old worn sort of gold look. It's just a bit of metallic, but it's not really shiny. It's more matte and it goes perfectly with this deck because there's quite a bit of that kind of flat or matte gold metallic. And so I'm going to be using this deck a lot. I like this deck. I really like the artwork on this deck. Someone has described it as a little bit like Deviant Moon, except without any of the deviants. <laughs> um, it's rather an innocent deck, actually. Uh, I think the people look a bit like Punch and Judy. See, right there with that nose. That's the lovers. What have you done with the baby, Mr. Punch? Move him out the window. Um, the Empress. It did come with two bonus cards. One of them was there at the beginning, the unknown, and the other one is the hand of fate. So I'm not gonna go through the whole thing page by page, but or card by card. There's the Wheel of Fortune. It's a really fun, it's a fun deck. I like it, it's nice to read with. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a little bit cheeky has a little bit of a quirky kind of sense of humor. Um, let's just see if I can find. The colors are not 
coming up very well on the camera. There's a bit more color to it in real life. I think it might be because I'm in front of a window. And the color palette's very soothing. It's very pleasant. The cards look aged, like they've been worn and some of the paint's worn off of them. Which I like that look too. Just feels like a very comfy deck. Very, very easy to read. There's the devil. See, that's what happens when you're Punch and Judy. The moon. So I'm probably not gonna find the hand of fate. Let's see, oh yeah, there he is. The hand of fate. So I look forward to working with this deck more. I haven't been using it terribly a lot. I'm not kind of sure what uh, category it seems to fall into to know, you know, how to grab it, what I want to use it for. Okay. The next one is the Angel Tarot, which is my first kind of foray into the Marseille. <clears throat> if you can call it that, I know probably Marseille enthusiasts would not. Um, this does not have any angels in it other than... Well, there's an angel on the box. It was made by the Angel Card Company in Japan in 1980. Um, I think it's often attributed to Stuart Kaplan as the author. This is what the backs look like. Plaid. Really? Really plaid? Why? Ugh. I don't know. I don't know why they do that. Um, so it's pippish, but you can see the colors are very different from Marseille, Marseille colors. And it also has the playing card designation, like there's a, is it upside down? Yeah. There's a um, spade, diamond. Aren't they pretty? Look how pretty they are. There's a club in the wands. The, I think the faces are very nice. They're really sweet faces. Very expressive. I'd like to learn a little bit more about the Marseille. I'm going to watch some videos on reading the Marseille. And I think this would be a fun deck to practice with. I've heard it's, it's a bit of a nice in between for people who are used to reading the uh, Waitsmith. This is kind of, there's an angel, one angel, two angels, here's another angel. Oh, and there's another angel right under there. <laughs> but I really think that's it for the angels. Once you get past those, there's temperance. Um, strength is... What number? Um, temperance, I... Not temperance. Um, oh, strength and justice. They're numbered like the Marseille. There, see? Strength is 11. So Justice, I guess, is eight. Anyway, that's it's an interesting deck. I look forward to using it, trying it out, seeing if I can learn a little bit. Um, it's out of print. I think I got this really, really inexpensively on eBay, though. It was not much at all. I think it was maybe $20, something like that. Brand new, so, okay. Um, the next deck I want to talk about, I guess, is the Wild Unknown. I got it last year, but I haven't really had much of a chance to work with it. I did um, chop the borders and then use a black Sharpie on the edges. And then I really liked it. The other thing that we did is there was just not enough color in this deck for me. So my daughter, who is an artist, um, took some uh, colored pencils, which can be erased, and sort of went through and added a little bit of extra color to some of the cards. Um, there's the fox. He's now a red fox. Look at that. <laughs> she was like, the Eight of Pentacles, she totally needs like an awesome web. Not a boring black and white web, so now she's got a rainbow web. So my daughter went through here and added quite a bit of color to things that did not have color. Um, not this because it just felt like there was not, I don't know, it just kind of needs to stand as, as it is, doesn't it? You know, stabbed in the back and you can't even see what to do next. Um, strength, she augmented a little bit. 
I wonder if I can find death card because there. Oh, doesn't that eighth, ace of pentacles look awesome? And the world's a little bit more pretty. The five of wands is a bit more mm, fighty, so you can see everybody's got their own color and they're coming from a different direction. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I really like what she did with death. I did not like this death card at all because it's a dead bird. And I really, I just didn't like it at all. And so she decided to color it in. And I don't know if you can see here. And there, there had been, I think these had been remnants of feather. In which, but she saw them as kind of pine tree needles. And she decided to color them green as though it, it was a pine tree. And I think that helps a bit for me with this particular card not to be kind of just, oh, taken aback when I see it because of the animal death. Um, and it also sort of illustrates the, the notion of something dies so something else can be reborn, almost as though this, this bird carcass is feeding a, a pine tree that's going to grow on top of it. I love how she did that. That was great. So I look forward to looking to working with this deck more in, in 2017, connecting with it, I think, a little bit more. I'd like to pick up the oracle that goes with it um, and see how those work together. Next is the Tarot of the She, which I also, I'm like a butcher. I think I, I don't know, I think I operate on every single deck. No, not every deck. So this is the Tarot of the She. I did where are you? I'm sorry. I chopped it down the sides with my gigantic scissors. And then, can you see that? And then I rounded the corners. I actually chopped it up the purple line. There's like a purple line here. I, I chopped it up the purple line. And then I rounded the corners with 10 millimeter instead of a 5 millimeter edge rounder. Um, edge round, corner rounder. And I think it looks fantastic, and it makes it really easy to shuffle now. And they're just gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to working with this uh, deck. This feels a bit like a spring-summer deck, particularly midsummer. Um, there's so much fire in it, you know, like St. John's Midsummer. Um, so I look forward to working with that. I think probably in the springtime a bit more. And last but not least, everybody, I think, has this deck. I couldn't resist it. Got the deck and the book. I had to get the second edition of the book because the first edition was sold out. But I think they're pretty much identical. And it is the Pagan Other Worlds. And I, I have not cracked open this deck and really started working with it yet. Like, I don't think I'm going to edge it. I'm not going to edge it. I'm not going to chop it. Um, it's just, it's just like perfect, exactly the way it is. It feels so, um, I don't know, it feels to me like standing in front of a painting, like a great master painting in a museum. When you get to stand there and see the real, you know, the real painting, or like the Rosetta Stone. Which I, I don't think when I saw the Rosetta Stone in the museum in, was it the British Museum? No, it's the London Museum, I think. I don't think it was the real Rosetta Stone. And then we saw the, well, I can't remember anything now, but I think most of them are <laughs> fake. But this doesn't feel like it. It feels like standing before a Monet or a Van Gogh or, I don't think I've ever seen a Da Vinci. I've seen a Da Vinci sketch in real life. And that's just what it feels like. <sighs> Isn't it amazing? So, okay, I'm about ready to play with these guys all day because I think, I think it's just about the, the right time of year to begin using this deck. This feels like a very grounded deck to me. This seems like, yeah, a nice groundy deck and I'm looking forward to working with that. So those are my decks of 2017 and there will probably be more but thanks for watching bye